Did you know that directed energy weapons will in the long run supersede conventional projectiles? The railgun is one such weapon. Its development cost the Navy more than $500 million and more than 15 years of effort. In this video, we will learn more about this giant railgun and its features. Stay tuned as we uncover. A long-term program for theoretical and practical study on railguns was announced in the 1980s by the Ballistic Study Laboratory, which later merged into the U.S. Army Research Laboratory. Since then, there has been intense work on researching railgun technology. Researchers drew heavily on the work of Australian National University scientists for their early trials, which were mostly conducted at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. The U.S. military redirected its research efforts in 1984 towards developing small guided missiles that could withstand high-velocity plasma-armored railgun launches and a constellation of satellites to intercept intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. However, the U.S. Army, Marine Corps, and DARPA were ordered to develop anti-tank electromagnetic launching technology for mobile ground vehicles just one year later, following the publication of significant research by the Defense Science Council. A cannon that fires projectiles using electricity instead of powder charges has been in development by the U.S. Navy since 2005. It is called the EMRG, Electromagnetic Railgun. Although gunpowder has three major drawbacks, it has, in theory, been the go-to fuel for projectile launchers for quite some time. Gunpowder causes bullets to travel at a muzzle velocity of around 4,000 feet per second, making the cartridge substantially heavier and is extremely explosive. This necessitates considerable caution when storing and transporting it. However, the electromagnetic railgun can circumvent all of these limitations. It can launch a projectile at an incredible 52,493 feet per second through an electrically generated magnetic field. The railgun's power supply, two rails running parallel to each other, and rotating armature make up its vast electrical circuit. Now, we'll examine each of these. The engine, a stream of electrical current measured in mega amps. The rails, these can be anywhere from 4 to 30 feet in length and are made of conductive metals like copper. A solid piece of conductive metal or a conductive shoe may be used to simulate the armature, which is responsible for covering the gap between the rails and holding the projectile in place. An example of plasma armature used by some railguns is a non-conductive projectile with thin metal foil attached to its rear. Therefore, this foil transforms into a plasma that carries a current when the energy that passes through it evaporates. The power source's positive terminal is connected to the positive rail, which carries an electrical current to the armature and then back to the power supply via the negative rail. An area with a magnetic force of magnitude and direction is created around a wire by the current flowing through it. This field is called a magnetic field. Let's see how it works. A magnetic field is ringed around each of the parallel rails in a railgun, which function as wires. This allows the railgun to fire. The magnetic field lines encompass the process of circumnavigating the positive rail in a clockwise direction and the negative rail in an anti-clockwise direction. Because the electric field is operating in parallel with the charged wire, the combined magnetic field that exists between the rails is orientated in a vertical direction in this scenario. The magnetic field and the direction of the current that is flowing through the armature are perpendicular to one another, and the projectile is subject to the Lorentz force. A parallelogram is formed by the Lorentz force and the rails, when it is viewed from a distance away from the place of origin of the power. Many variables, including the magnetic field, the rail length, the current, and the net force, are taken into consideration while determining its value. It is represented by the equation F equals sine ILB. To intensify the force, either the length of the rails or the current might be increased. Since long rails could potentially pose design complications, the majority of railguns generate a significant amount of force by employing massive currents. The current can be measured in millions of amps or more. After that, the projectile is launched out of the aperture after being driven to the opposite end of the rails by the Lorentz force, which originates from the power source. The circuit breaks then causes the current to suddenly stop flowing completely. At least in theory, a railgun has the potential to be an excellent weapon for both long-range and close-range shooting. Some companies have aggressively lobbied for the idea of developing the railgun in the United States. Among these companies are General Atomics, which introduced a ground-based version of the railgun known as the Blitzer in 2013, and BAE Systems, which provided the United States Navy with a 32MJ prototype in 2007. As a result of the United States Naval Research Administration's firing of a projectile with 33MJ of power in 2010, which established a new world record, the latter concept has been tested. Nothing big comes without struggles, right? The engineers encountered obstacles, the most notable of which was the introduction of railguns. This is customary with proposals that are on the end of the technological spectrum. When it came to conventional American battleships, 
the employment of railguns had become an impediment due to the large current that was necessary to launch missiles at Mach 5 or higher. Talking about the railgun and the ships, it is not possible to separate the power required for a railgun from the capability of the ship's propulsion system. Even though the 32 megajoules configuration requires a minimum of 15 megawatts and ideally 30 megawatts of onboard electricity, the power generation capabilities of American CG-47 cruisers or DDG-51 destroyers are simply not sufficient. Advanced railguns with a capacity of 64 megajoules or above are far more dangerous. These railguns require power sources from ships that are 40 megawatts, 50 megawatts, or even higher. Only ships of the most recent Zumwalt or DDX generations are capable of producing up to 78 megawatts, which is approximately 20 megawatts more than what the ship needs for stable operation. A railgun projectile can be fired from such a ship by spinning an engine that powers the gun turret. This would allow the weapon to fire six rounds per minute for an endless amount of time. The electricity would then be transferred to the engine of the ship. The following is a list of additional disadvantages that ought to be brought into consideration. Force exerted by it. For the rails to be able to withstand the huge recoil force that the projectile experiences, the muzzle velocity of the projectile must be extremely high. To create a powerful pushing force, the current in the rails of the weapon is reversed. This causes the rails to attempt to separate from one another. This results in the formation of an arc, which in turn leads to the rails and insulator surfaces being severely damaged and evaporating in a short amount of time. According to Admiral Matthew Clunder's claim from 2014, the service life of the railgun barrel has been increased from dozens of rounds to over 400 rounds. It is to eventually reach over 1,000 rounds. Despite this, the Office of Naval Research has not provided any information regarding whether or not the 400 shots were projectiles fired from the railgun with full power charges. But that's not all. In addition to having a rate of fire of six rounds per minute, it was predicted that the railgun used by the United States Navy would have a service life of around 3,000 rounds. Scientists, on the other hand, believe that technological advancement continues to impose limitations on humans. As a result, such lofty ambitions are still unattainable. They claim that it requires tens of thousands of hours of research and development in the field of material science to locate the ideal material for the rails of this revolutionary gun. A further crucial feature of the railgun is its projectile guidance, which is essential for the railgun's deployment in warfare. The creation of a dependable navigation package is required for the cannon to be able to shoot at targets that are located at a great distance and kill missiles that are coming. The creation of such a package, on the other hand, has been a tremendous pain. The manufacturing complexity of the package is verified by a request from the Navy. The request stipulates that the package cannot exceed 4.4 pounds in mass, 40 millimeters in diameter, and 200 cubic centimeters in volume, all of which must be accomplished without affecting the center of gravity of the projectile while maintaining its integrity. An additional requirement is that it must be able to withstand an acceleration of 40,000 g at every entry point with a minimum of 20,000 G being necessary. In addition, the package must be radiation-resistant to be used for exo-atmospheric flight, and it must be able to function even when plasma is formed in the bore or at the muzzle entry. Within the first five minutes after starting up, the battery must have a minimum of five minutes of life left, and the total threshold power consumption must not be higher than eight watts, with a target of five watts. The assumption that the cost of producing a projectile is less than $1,000 underpins all of this that has been stated. A maximum projectile velocity of 4,600 miles per hour has been reported by the United States Office of Naval Research. This velocity is several times faster than the greatest projectile velocity of 1260 miles per hour that a 155 mm howitzer has ever achieved. When the United States Department of Defense shifted the Navy's attention to hypersonic missiles and lasers, the railgun project was abandoned, although it had been funded for more than $500 million and had been the subject of research for 15 years. Even though this does not eliminate the possibility of a railgun being installed aboard a Zumwalt or any other advanced Navy ship in the future, it does show that other issues have received greater priority. We believe Congress and the President may change their minds soon, especially when taking into account the friendly connections that exist between the United States and China, a nation that is also working hard to develop its very own railgun. Are you in agreement? Is the railgun idea going to be allowed for discussion by scientists and the military? Post a comment telling us. Please subscribe, like, and comment below this video if you found it entertaining. Doing so will ensure that you receive similar videos in the future. Thank you. See you in the next video.